Now, this last part here, the, the fourth course in the open online, the last three sessions in the UC course, that's very important to me because we really need to, at the end, you know, we need your help, we need everybody's help to see how social evolution is socially constructed through digital technology. And we need to socially construct that together. So we build our way up to that. And we have to do that. We, we go through that in these uh, three sessions or in three, three blocks. We start with digital technology, then we go into social change, and then we can see how we socially construct that. So let's see, first of all, let's go into the theory of technological change that is a sub part of innovation theory and see how technology evolves. Let's take a pretty old information technology that can store sound, for example. So we started with the tinfoil wrap from Edison and then we see we went through some different innovations until we have our streaming services nowadays. And the question is, so how, how does technology evolve? Actually, what's the evolutionary trajectory? It evolves like biology too. How does it actually work? And we can see Spoiler alert, look, I go through all of this now very fast. I hope you don't, you know, you don't get overwhelmed with that and say like, oh my goodness. No, each one of them will take quite some time to work through. So I just want to show you a little bit what's going on there. And then please come and visit us. Take the time, you know, we can also watch the content, you know, several times. That's the great thing in an online recording and see how it works. But basically, I hope that's intuitive. Technology evolves exponential that makes technological progress so overwhelmingly fast and so, so difficult for us to predict because it's so fast, exponentially fast. But it also goes in, you know, I could call it jumps. In biology, we call this punctuated equilibriums. So there is, you know, a dog and a wolf. And in between, it's like, there's a gray zone, but either it's a dog or it's a wolf. So we have, we have these, also these punctuated equilibrium, either it's a vinyl record or it's a tape. And that's how that actually works. So we will go much deeper into technological innovation cycles and, and technological change. Uh, and, and it's important to understand that. So you don't have to be, you know, we don't have to be so anxious. It's, 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 it's okay. And artificial intelligence follows the same logic and, and other applications, new technology. So it's important to get an understanding in order to confront our digital reality. Now, how does society evolve? Spoiler alert, quite similar. So we take here yeah, the, the prophet of innovation, Schumpeter, innovation theorist, economist, and the contours of innovation, if we look at them, how society evolves, we take the energy consumption or we can take an economic indicators. And if you look really closely and study that, you can see also, well, it, it increases exponentially and there is some progress and there are also these similar waves that we can distinguish. And I told you in the digital age, we are in the second already, according to me. So first we started with data and communication and now we are in knowledge and they're also accumulative. In technology, technological change that's also often not so clear. In social innovation, social evolution, yes, it's, it's accumulative, similar to biological evolution. I mean, once the eye is in, it can be adopted, but then it can be adopted by other species and we still use some of the hardware of the eye in different in different species as it has evolved. And the same here, it still creates value to own land and to or extract resources from the land or like do agriculture. It still creates value to do that energetically efficiently. And hopefully we get much more energetically efficient to you know, satisfy our, our ever increasing needs. But now we, we optimize information and, and create knowledge. We automate the knowledge creation. That's the, that's the additional, the aggregate value of that. And we will look much deeper into how this actually goes together and how this technological change goes together with social evolution. And you can also then understand it better for your own creative ideas. And I hope a lot of interesting projects uh, will come out of that. Now, inevitably, as society technology diffuses through society, and we will work through this process here, it doesn't fall equally, like from heaven, it, it, it takes some time and inevitably, unfortunately, creates a divide. We call this the digital divide. It's a new form of inequality, a very, very some form of inequality, because it's a difference in information and knowledge. As the technology 
diffuses slowly through society. Inside a society, not everybody has the same access. And as more and more advanced it becomes, there are newer forms of inequality and knowledge inequality. And knowledge is famously power, isn't it? So we have to look into that as well, the, the digital divide. And then finally, we get into policy or business strategies. Now, what can we do here? And in the knowledge paradigm, we will go directly to that. It has a lot to do with ethics. And we go back to the ethics textbooks. It's still very important, much more important, especially in a new technological paradigm to talk about ethics and the different aspects of it. And to see how we can align a technology with our human values that hopefully will sustain us. We are not a very old species, if you think about it that way. And, and it's important that we align that. That's called AI alignment. But we also align still previous technologies. I mean, that with the combustion engine, with the cars and so forth, and, and the global warming, is that really aligned? Are we sure that we are on a good, aligned, sustainable path here or not? Or what? what we're still working on that too. Now, if it comes to the automation of knowledge, if we take one of the pioneers, Professor Norbert Wiener, cybernetics, the early days of AI, you could say, already Wiener in the 1960s warned us and Professor Wiener said, if we use to achieve our purposes, a mechanical agency with whose operation we cannot efficiently interfere once we have started it, it's automated, then we had better be quite sure that the purpose put into the machine is the purpose which we really desire. And we better be quite sure. Are we? Are we? So we have to really talk about that. Uh, we use our artificial intelligence framework that I already introduced here, and we, we will work a lot around that. It's very important that we align this goal here because that's one input. You know, we, we put data and the goal in. So what is the goal that we actually want to achieve? This goal has many names. In computer science, it's the reward function, the loss function, the utility function, the objective function. So what is the objective? Where are we going? What, what is the utility? that we wanna get out of that. Once we define that, that's maybe the most important thing because the machine itself tells us how to get there. We just have to say, we wanna to get to Rome. And the machine says, well, you wanna get there quickly or safely or how do, or energy efficiently, how do you, I can do all of that. And the machine looks for the best way to achieve our purpose, where do we want to go? And that's why the most important question in the digital age might be WTF. Always ask yourself, WTF. What's the function? <laughs> what is the function that we put into the machine? And once we have a basic understanding then of you know, the alignment of this technology, which we get to there in the last part, uh, I can also share some of the experiences I gathered working in governments, inter international organizations, the United Nations, and in companies too, chief digital strategist or something in, in, in companies uh, or NGOs. And I can share some of my experiences with what we can do in order to confront this exponential emergent phenomena that we call the digital paradigm and as it co-constructed co with our social reality. Well, that brings it together. These are the four parts that we have here. So, and it, these different explorations have different length. You can look them up together and, and I hope you stay with us. I, I don't mind if you listen to me in double speed. I don't know if my language goes to double speed. So you can certainly cut down in that length. You can also skip some parts, especially in the public version. In the, on, in the UC online version, you better don't skip some parts. There's also some extra content that in the public version, you're very kindly invited to explore. For the UC students, it's not optional. <laughs> So you have to work through that content, but still it's very manageable also for UC students. And we will talk a little bit more about that. So every week it's not even two hours of content. And we will talk more about that, that extremely, extremely light in, in terms of a lecture, a heavy class like this one. And we have split it up over, over these 10 weeks. All right, this is the content. Uh, I hope to see you in, in all the different parts. And I'm very much looking forward and I thank you that you come here and help us to co-construct the digital revolution, and it hasn't even started yet. I mean, it is already by far the dominating paradigm, but we didn't see anything yet. A lot is still to come. So thank you for taking the time as well and being part of this very exciting exploration into our digital future.